Um, most of this world builds love upon visualization and things that are um, how beautiful somebody is, uh, what their body proportions are, um, many other factors which tend to all change after you get married. And your sand shifts and things happen and you get sick and old and two weeks after I was born my father was in the hospital. <coughs> Excuse me, not not expected to live. And you never know what's going to face you when you're married. If you're blessed to be with somebody years and years, you are blessed. But there are no perfect spouses. And let me just share with you one of the biggest lies of the enemy is um, that if you had just done this, that, or the other thing, why, um, you would have a happy marriage, but it's all your fault that you don't. I, I was thinking about this subject and, uh, and looking at some of the factors of our life. And, um, my wife and I have been married <coughs> quite a long time. <laughs> and uh, both of us like to come home because there's this little four pound dog. Looks like he got a haircut with a string trimmer. But, uh, <laughs> but she squeaks and wiggles and she's all so thrilled to see us. And you know, I was thinking of that today, you know, what a difference it makes when your spouse is happy to see you. When you're greeted, when you're welcomed, when your presence is desired. In Genesis, uh, God, God said about man, looking at Adam, he says it's not good for man to dwell alone. And uh, and that could be reinterpreted um, because the, the part that says alone actually means to be cut off. In other words, not to have anybody. And a lot of people spend their life wishing their spouse was different. And you ruin your life when you do that. Your spouse is a gift to you. And uh, marriage is a covenant. Um, it's not, uh, if you'll do this for me, I will do this for you. The moment you start keeping score, you've lost the ball game. This is, um, this is not the biblical covenant of marriage. Because there are, when you get married, there are many, many things that you have to lay down in order to achieve marriage. It's not the fulfillment of all your hopes and dreams and wishes. You're not going to have that. Um, but marriage, there's several things that marriage teaches you. And one of them is to be vulnerable. To share your true thoughts and feelings. To be willing to expose yourself. And to be willing to share what you're feeling bad about. Um, 
being willing to talk it through and having somebody that's being willing to listen to what you have to say. Because a lot of times, um, I think maybe more so with women, they need to talk it out to figure out how they really feel. And men, they don't even know how they feel. They know that they're mad, they know that they're sad, but they're really not sure why. They just are. And uh, they may go out in the workshop and beat on a few things with a hammer and come back in smiling again, but they really don't know what happened. Um, jump in the car, you know, do something. Um, but marriage is being vulnerable. And, and one of the things that you learn in marriage is that you can be happy without all your dreams being fulfilled. Happiness comes from the inside, not from the outside. There is no possession that will buy you happiness. A possession is just something else to take care of. Like a carburetor on an ATV, for instance. <laughs> I know that personally. Uh, but learning to be happy where you are, with what's going on, with the battle that you're having to face, and knowing that you can be happy with God no matter what. That no matter what goes on in your life, you can be happy no matter who is president. You can be happy no matter who gets elected to the Supreme Court. You can be happy in all areas. In fact, the Bible says rejoice always. And again, I say rejoice. Because not one bit of sadness that you go around with is going to change your world. You cannot be sad and change your world. You cannot be miserable and change your world. You cannot be anything. Because your world is something for you to live with in life. But one of the greatest gifts that God gives us is having someone to love. One of the greatest gifts that we have is when God gives us somebody to love and we go and see that as a mission. Not to be a doormat, but just having the gift of somebody that we can show love to that's ours, that cares about us. Marriage is a covenant. Um, a covenant is designed and made for mutual benefit but it's also made for benefit. Um, there are times that we don't understand the, the aspects of that, and I can't talk about it tonight, and I, uh, because I have a time clock running, but very often marriage counselors spend hours and hours trying to teach people how to talk to their spouse so their spouse will open up and share their heart. And in order for somebody to share their heart, they have to be safe with you. Because if you don't feel safe, you don't share secrets. And if you're not sharing secrets, you're not being vulnerable. And if you're not sharing 
the secrets and the feelings of your life, you're not really communicating. You're communicating on a newspaper level instead of a heart-to-heart -heart level. And we have to learn to, marriage is learning to trust the other person progressively to the point that we can share our deepest sorrows and desires and even share those vulnerabilities of our life that make us vulnerable to the outside world. How does that happen? That happens when we know that the person that we've shared these things with will be faithful to love us and not use those things to be a weapon in some way. It starts out with not continuously mentioning your spouse's faults. Um, it seems to be something about life that the thing that we criticize, we often find out in our own life. And uh, one, one of the greatest gifts that God gives us is just the little things of being together and sharing our lives with each other in a way that, that we can appreciate it. The thankful heart doesn't have to have things a certain way. The thankful heart says, thank you, Lord, that I have food in the cupboard. Thank you, Lord, that we have a car. Thank you, Lord, that we have a roof over our head. Thank you, Lord, that I've got clothes to wear. And practicing that thankfulness for what God has given us allows us to form a relationship with the other person where we are less drawing from them for our happiness and more realizing that God has given us this gift of the other person. And, and it's not about what we achieve. It's not about any of those things. It's about that personal sharing of love one to another. I had a, uh, a great aunt that to me was so exemplary of agape love. In fact, the, the five Greek words that we normally associate with love in the Greek language very much describe various forms of love. And they kind of form a progression. Most people get married when the hormones are high. And so there's eros and epithumia, desire and, and erotic drive that's there. But then along with that, you realize after the honeymoon that there's a person that's living with you that you have to get along with. And so you need a little bit of phileo the brotherly love to go along with it. <laughs> and, uh, and, and so then you realize when things aren't going well or the other person isn't feeling good that you have to love them even though they're not easy to love and agape is necessary at that time. And, and then after a number of years of being with them, you realize you have something called storage, which is the familiar love that we have because we've been around each other and sharing each other for so many years. And yet all of these things are part of marriage. Marriage is a part of all of them. And without any one of those components, you don't really have a, a marriage that's desirable or that type of a relationship. Um, as you get older, it's having the friendship, it's having the people to share your life with. Um, my great aunt um, 
was mostly blind. She had a detached retina. And her greatest joy was calling people up and seeing what way she could meet their needs. And she would go around uh, with clothes that were held together with safety pins. And my mother would try to get her to get some clothes and she just wouldn't do it because it was a waste of money. And she could still wear this. And uh, my grandfather, um, kind of similar. Um, my mom, he had this old chair he used to sit in. He retired um, from the gas station and went home and watched TV. And uh, he had a little black and white, refused to upgrade to a color one, took a lot of convincing to get him to do that. And uh, he would sit there. And one day my mom bought him the Lazy Boy. He threw a fit. How dare you spend your money on me? Mom dragged, drugged the lazy boy in there, and he was upset because she had done something for him. And yet he had spent his life doing things for my mother. That was his goal. I thought to myself, how much that is like the Lord who loves us with a love that is only focused on trying to bless the other person. To focus on how can I meet the need of somebody else? How can I be a blessing to them? And sometimes one of the greatest blessings that we can give are compliments. That all of us need to feel valued, don't we? We need to feel valued. And speaking into somebody else and saying, you did a good job, you look good today, I like that outfit on you. Just the littlest tiny things that don't cost a nickel can be some of the greatest things. You did a good job cooking today. It, the house looks nice. All kinds of different compliments. Thank you for helping me with this or help. Thank you for doing that for me. And sometimes we get so used to the things that the other person does, they feel like it's totally unappreciated. And, you know, I thank God for a wife that does the laundry. Amen. That's a good thing. Amen. It's nice to pull that drawer open and see something in there to put on. Um, um, my mother, of course, decided that I needed to learn how to do certain things. And uh, um, we were raised to... to to learn how to do laundry and to cook and to iron and to do things like that. But you know what? It feels very special when Joanne does something for me. <laughs> and once in a while I do something for her that she considers special too. And I try to. I don't always succeed, I don't think, but I try to. The other people that God gives us and whether we're married or whether we are not married, God has given us people that we can love, that we can pour into. I, you know, Terrell's going to be here in a couple of days. And, uh, and, and I was shocked when we first met him and, and we would go out to eat after church. And how Terrell would go out of his way to make a waitress feel so appreciated and loved. 
And he would brag on the service and brag on the food. I guess I've told you this story before, but we, we went out to Frost, which is um, just this side of Casa Grande. <laughs> out Oracle Road. Oracle at night, that's where it is. And we were walking in there one day and, and, and went in there and Tara went in first. And he goes in, ah, oh, this is great. Thank you for your great service. I appreciate you guys. And I guess the customer that came in before just shredded him. And uh, so we, we came into Frost and I think we'd been out to breakfast and decided to celebrate afterwards or something. But anyway, the, the manager was in there and Tara comes in and he's this ray of sunshine in a world of blackness. And, and the manager says, your ice cream's free. <laughs> they charge a lot for their ice cream. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. Well, yeah. uh, it's a lot of money. Um, but see, there's a hunger within every one of us to feel loved. Even as from it's a little wiggly dog. We all want to feel loved, amen? amen? And I think marriage is about looking for some place to pour our love that God gives us on the inside into them. Just pour it in. Now, many years ago, <laughs> there was a woman in the church and there was a salvation message. And, and uh, and there was a woman that was just, her life was in trouble. My mom came up to her and put her arm around her, sitting in the pew. And she just broke down and cried. She needed somebody to care. You know, agape cares for somebody that's hurting, even when it's their fault. Even when the problem they're in is totally caused by them. We need love no matter what the reason. We are all desperately, necessarily hungry for somebody to love us and to recognize what we're doing and say, you know, you're a blessing. You really do a lot. Thank you. I've sat here in this congregation. I see these guys that are working at the church. And Chuck is here faithful as he can be on work day. Lorraine's a Bible teacher. We've got these guys that are willing to been in advanced levels and jobs, and they're out here chopping weeds, hacking bushes, chopping rattlesnakes into, you know, all the usual stuff that we run into. And they do an excellent job. Dean took our lift home, ripped it apart, put it all back together again. Probably saved us ten or fifteen thousand dollars. It's all in a day's work. A few days work, getting stuck at the top in his garage and a few other interesting situations. Dion is here all the time working. Sue makes the best cookies in the house. 
<laughs> and all these people, Jerry, Jerry is a former boat salesman. I, I don't mean rowboats, I mean. And yet he was here changing light bulbs and stuff. We are, and I said that to say this, we are all valuable. But all of us need to be recognized. We wouldn't have a work day if it wasn't for Jim rousting everybody out. <laughs> Ted's here all the time working on the watering system. We, you see, we need to value and to share appreciation for everybody that God's given us in our lives. And absolutely to say thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you, Joaquin, for being faithful to Sound Booth and Carl and all these other people. And Kathy brings me water and John and Ashley are always doing music. And you know, everybody's doing something around here. They do. Pat's got writer's cramp from so many thank you cards and birthday cards that she writes out. So. <laughs> we have people around here faithful in all kinds of different dimensions, but everybody is valuable. We just need to appreciate them for what they've done. I'm over time. God bless you. Lord, we just thank you for today. I pray, Lord, that this Valentine's season would not be based on the size of a gift or <laughs> what words are said on a card or anything else. But Lord, that we would just show appreciation to each other and make each one of us realize how valuable we are to the other person. We thank you for it, Lord. And we praise you for it. And we ask your blessing upon every family relationship, every marriage relationship, and Lord, our relationship in the body of Christ. We thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Say amen. 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 amen.